ಷನ್ನೋ ಮಿತ್ರಂ ವರುಣ ಷನ್ನೋವರ್ಯನ್ನ ಇಂದ್ರೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿ ಷನ್ನೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುರುರುಕ್ರಮ ನಮೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ವಾಯೋವ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸಿ ಪ್ರತ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವದಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ವೃತ ವದಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸತ್ಯಂ ವದಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ತನ್ಮಾವತು ತದ್ಭಕ್ತಾರಮವತು ಅವತು ಮಾಂ ಅವತು ಭಕ್ತ we have seen how and why human beings enjoy always a truncated ananda a truncated ananda means an ananda that is inhibited by many many factors we saw that for the desirable object and the desirer to come together many things have to fall in place there should be bahya sadhanas means external things that come into place the object must be available it must be within reach etc etc and there should be adhyatmika sadhanas means the conducive state of the body mind sense complex in order to become one with the object of desire so therefore there is always that truncated ananda because it depends on so many factors external and internal and therefore it is a inhibited ananda a limited ananda a finite ananda because it is based on experience and because that experience in order to bring about we need to move mountains in order to be in that particular state and so the swarupa ananda the, the my own ananda which is not janita janita means which is not manufactured is something that is with me all the time and one has to discover that and in order to make this point and how to discover this uh, the upanishad that our taitriya upanishad sets up a very interesting uh, scenario first it gathers together uh, an ideal typical one unit of human ananda what is the greatest amount of ananda that one person can enjoy oh already everybody is excited oh let's see what this is all about so it imagines a youth yuva and then youth means what because the body is the, the, the sadhanas are fit the body is fit and that to here it imagines a young man and all the women must be like what's wrong this is you know what is that this is very sexist this is not correct why not young women because you know men are stronger that's why men are physically stronger so there is a male upadhi that is imagined and also this is a Uh, what is that generally speaking a patriarchal society and one has uh, even from the even the upanishad knows an easier time in her man's body in many many ways one is more visible one is more public the upanishad recognizes that and the upanishad says let us imagine this one young man okay and the word young goes with restless young and restless no 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 he is a sadhu he is not restless at all sadhu and young oh this is wonderful 
Sadhu means, the, uh, Adi Shankara will explain this. He says, Yathoktakari means he does what is to be done, does not do what is not to be done. Two, he's like a goody two shoes, sounds too good to be true. And not only that, Adhyayakaha, very well educated. Very well educated, of a calm, tranquil demeanor, still young, a youth. And then, Sadhu Yuva, then oh, Ashishtaha. Ashishtaha means that Ashu, Ashu means quickly. The one who is not a procrastinator. Because procrastination brings sorrow, you see, that they, it inhibits the Ananda already. Because, see, if supposing uh, one does not do laundry at all, you know, for I don't know how long, two weeks maybe, and then everything is dirty, is in the bag, dirty laundry bag. Only thing that is clean is left is one hanky to cry into, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> So, so then what will happen if I have to do every, all this, you know, five loads of laundry at once, naturally there will be stress, naturally there will be sorrow, and naturally I want to, I'm in a rush, I want to do everything at once, and one stuffs the machine, and of course the machine will go bad, because it will stop working, it will rebel. So therefore, this young man is not a procrastinator, ashishtaha, and then what? Dradishtaha means whatever he decides to do, he does. Dhairyavan has courage and he, it is not that, he, and his speech, no, speech is here, his thinking, speech and action are all aligned. One kind of a, you know, it's, it's not like some goes, he says something and does something else. Dradishtaha, and whatever he, sankalpa, intention he makes, he carries it through very nicely. This is sounding like a very good life partner, you know, for people. And, and then, especially when Indian parents study this part of the Upanishad, they start thinking, oh, son-in-law material. <laughs> but one thing is missing. What is that thing? Must be, must be a nerd. No social skills. You, you go foo and then he just falls off. So, you know, the, some of these guys sitting in front of the computer all the time. No. Balishta. He works out. He does yoga. He has strong muscles. Yeah, but still one thing is missing. What is missing? The most important thing is missing. Show me the money. <laughs> ya iam prithivi, and the Upanishad says, imagine, ya iam prithivi, that this whole Mother Earth, vittasya purna syat. So all her resources, natural resources, timber, tree resources, land resources, real estate, and then what else? Mineral resources, the gems, the, the gold, the silver, all of it belongs to this fellow only. Of course, that cannot happen in real life. This is a hypothetical, imaginary setup. And then the Upanishad says, this is the greatest possible one unit of human ananda. <laughs> and then, of course, imagine how happy this man must be. This uh, imaginary man, young man, because everything belongs to him, nobody is there, everything, nobody can hold a candle to his wealth, to his uh, upbringing, to his uh, uh, dharma, dharmic, uh, whatever, nothing, everything is so wonderful. But then, what? Everybody has a boss. Even the ananda that he enjoys is bossed over by somebody else's ananda. So we cannot say any other person, no other man or woman can equal to him. So then we have to go to celestial areas, <laughs> celestial arenas. So then, well, then you know the Upanishad, because the Upanishad wants to keep us in, in good, keep the mind in very good shape, asks us to do some mathematics. It says multiply this one unit of ananda into 100. Okay, done that, finished, check, 
Okay, then after you multiply that into 100, that becomes one unit of Manushya Gandharva, um, Gandharva's Ananda. Who is this Manushya Gandharva? They were all Manushyas. Manushyas means human beings in their last life. Now, because of some punya, the upadhi, the container in which they are born, has changed. It has become super subtle. It has become very, uh, what is that, very much into fine arts. Because even to appreciate fine arts like music, dance, sculpture, painting, you know, there should be a certain kind of a disposition. Even to enjoy literature, there should be certain kind of disposition. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Charles Dickens, okay, like, and then supposing if that disposition is not there, <laughs> finished, go on. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it becomes a lullaby. Okay, so the disposition must be there. And that kind of a very fine disposition to enjoy the fine things in life, these Manushya Gandharvas have much more than the human being. The human being is a klutz, you know, goes and dashes into things all the time and, and, uh, and does not really, you know, picks himself up and then goes about the life like that. But this person has just very fine sensitivities and, ha and can, uh, and can uh, extract the enjoyment in a way that we in this realm of human um, loka cannot enjoy at all. So then hundreds units of our ananda becomes what? One unit of their ananda. Manushya Gandharva's ananda. And then it goes on and on. Then you do the math again. You multiply Manushya Deva Gandharva's Ananda into what? 100. And then what do you get? One unit of somebody else's Ananda. <laughs> Whose Ananda is it? It is Deva Gandharva's. Who are these Deva Gandharva's? <laughs> they are even more refined. Yes. They are even more refined because they arrive in a very subtle kind of a body. And they have, they are just, you know, in, in the human loka, one has to struggle, 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 struggle to get even one siddhi. What is that siddhi? How to read the mind of others. I, actually, this is a very boring siddhi, okay, yeah, because if you know your own mind, you know what kinds of nonsensical thoughts keep coming all the time. And why do you want to multiply that and read other people's minds? Don't do that, okay? Yeah. Stay with uh, yoga and Vedanta, it's enough. Yeah, so <laughs> this is the, so even to get acquire one Siddhi, so much hard work has to be put. There they have these siddhis, a siddhi here, a siddhi there, siddhi everywhere, here is siddhi, there a siddhi everywhere, siddhi, siddhi. These deva gandharvas, whatever they want, they manifest. They don't need to go to the shop, they don't need to go shopping, they don't need to earn money in order to spend, they don't need to do anything. Whatever they want comes. And they just, uh, they don't even, to even have to sit and uh, conceptualize, they think of it and it appears. And not only that, let us say that they are, this is just, you know, for fun. It's not that they are into arguments, but supposing they're caught in a terrible argument and uh, they don't know how to get out of the argument, what do they do? They simply disappear. <laughs> <laughs> That's another Siddhi. Disappearance Siddhi, very useful, yeah. Supposing you have difficulty saying no, and then people say, please come to this event and whatnot, and you just disappear before you say anything. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Leaving no trace. They have these kinds of siddhis. Who are they? Deva Gandharvas. And like this, the list goes. We will see this and, uh, you know, enjoy this very enjoyable section. That's why I saved the best for the last. Because without this background, this would not have meant anything. You see, the ananda, that I have ananda is not an issue. The, that is okay, but that the, uh, the other fellow has more ananda than me, that is the thorn in my side. I don't want that. 
This is why this Taratamya, Taratamya means the comparative analysis of various kinds of possible Anandas, not only in the human realm, Loka, but in all the other realms, are presented. And then again you keep doing the math, it goes more and more and more and more and more. Then why am I being given this? Why am I being told, uh, you know, why am I being told that all these uh, celestials of various uh, hues are enjoying more and more ananda than I am? This is a, rem this is a sure prescription for this depression. Because <laughs> if I keep thinking all the other people are plus hundred, not plus, multiplied by hundred is one ananda of Indra and multiplied by hundred is his guru's ananda, prajapati's ananda and then multiply that by hundred is this, you know, it's so far removed by, compared to my ananda, then I feel like going to bed even after having gotten up because what to do? This is all in some other realm. Either I should be born in those realms to enjoy the Ananda or I should just, you know, just spend my life sadly. That is not why the Upanishad presents this. Because uh, when we chant, we will see this, there is a chorus. Yesterday we heard a chorus, Sharanam Mayappa, <laughs> like that. Here also there is one Sharanam Mayappa. This chorus is just so beautiful because it says Shrotriyasyacha Akamahatasyacha. So the one unit of human ananda is enjoyed effortlessly by one person sitting under a tree. Who is this person sitting under a tree? Asadhu. As it is described in the Yati Panchakam, in the in the quintet for the sadhu it's also called kaupina panchakam the quintet of the loin cloth mulam taroho kevalam ashrayantaha the one whose home is at the base of the tree kevalam means doesn't have any other homes it's not that i have many homes and i am this also i have a tree house no this is the only place of refuge and then the, the, who is this sadhu? He has got or she has got wonderful dinnerware, the finest china. <laughs> what is the finest? Oh, finest china, yes. Wonderful bone china. What is that? And see, bones are there. That's why. <laughs> bone china. And uh, ecologically wonderful. Wash, wipe, eat. Wash, wipe, keep. Simple. Reusable and biodegradable. Panidvaye bhoktum amantrayantaha, ready to eat at any time because the dinnerware, the plates, the spoons, the forks are easily available. And then the one that has thrown away all kinds of desires into the garbage. Kaupinavantaha. The one with the loin cloth, Khalu Bhagyavantaha, is the most fortunate. And that means what? Somebody is Kaupinavantaha means the one with the loin cloth. So somebody studying this asked, So I should go shopping for loin cloth? I said, No. <laughs> it's not that you have. A, what is that called? Walk-in closet full of wonderful clothes, you know, according to color and everything. Color-coded uh, closet. And then you also have a loincloth closet. No! <laughs> that means all you have to call your own is a loincloth. For decency and to not alarm the people. That, that's why. You know, just to basic to covering that is there. That is what it means. All they have is a loin cloth, and then well, they are the most happy. Bhagyavantaha means they are the most auspicious, they are the most fortunate because they don't need anything else. They do, they, their dependency on the Vishaya has, has uh, uh, been eliminated by proper training of the sense organs, and the training is not enough because even though the sense organs might be trained, the Bhagavad Gita says uh, that one can lapse 
one can relapse into the world of sense objects. Yatato hyapikaunteya purushasya vipaschitaha indriyani pramadhini haranti prasabham manaha. So even the person is striving to, to train the sense organs and to not be overtaken by the sense objects. Still what happens? The indriyas, the sense organs, they have a mind of their own. And the mind of course has a mind of, the, of its own. And haranti, haranti means they take away the resolve by force, prasabham, haranti. They take away the resolve. So it's not just by training, because you can just be away from the vishayas, from the objects of delight, and then just be, uh, just be completely away from them. So out of, uh, what is that called? Out of sight, out of mind. But then as soon as it's in sight, <laughs> I want to indulge. It's not just training. It is a different kind of a training. It is the training of the, the, the buddhi to abide in itself. And this is what we have been doing in the last week. It is to reorient the buddhi, the thinking, to see that one need not depend on the vishayas at all. So what does one have to do? One has to get out of one's own solipsistic subjectivity and live in the world of Ishvara and due to the, the bhakti and the surrender and the teachings, what happens is that one becomes a devotee and one surrenders. And because of the prasada of this surrender, one comes out of this and then the next level is to, one comes out of this sub, subjective uh, reality. And then the next, the final level is to see that I am one with everything. I am one with this Ishvara. So everything is already mine. I don't have to strive for anything. This is the training the sadhu sitting under a tree has received. And that training is expressed in one word, Shrotriya. Shrotriya means the one who has listened to the Guru very, 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 very carefully. That person has listened to the Gurus and therefore all the, all the pain, the sorrow, etc. has been just cast away because the teaching has made inroads into the heart. We say that, uh, we see that the lotus flower blooms only when the sun rises. And this becomes a very nice metaphor for all Vedantic poets who say that the lotus is the heart and the sun is the Shastra. So the sun, the rays of the sun is the Shastra expressed by the Guru, uh, magnified, amplified and explained by the Guru. And so the light of the Shastra opens, blossoms the heart, allows the heart to bloom. So this is what is called Shrotriya. And Shrotriya is not, okay, I have attended one Vedanta class in my life. That's not Shrotriya. The one who has a commit, who has had a committed exposure. Committed exposure means after which one need not be committed, okay, yeah, <laughs> to an institution. So this is what is meant by committed exposure. So after having this committed exposure, the, because you see the samskaras are very old, they can even be from past life. I am an idiot, how to remove that? It has to repeated listening. Where's that away? <laughs> Where's that away? Where's that away? Repeated listening is very much needed. And so, therefore, this person has done that, Shrotriya. And then what? Then Akamahataha. We have to be careful when we resolve compounds in Sanskrit. Akama means what? No desires, free of desires. Hata means destroyed, killed. Don't say killed by no desire. No. <laughs> Kamena. Nahataha, one that is never hijacked by whatever desires they have. They are not abducted and kidnapped by the desires. They are free. Even when they are surrounded by objects of desires, they are free enough to enjoy them or not. They, they don't have pangs of, 
unfulfillment. They don't have unfinished agenda. They don't have a list of what still needs to be done. Five-year plan, 10-year plan, 15-year plan is not there. What is the plan? To have no plans is the plan. That is the sadhu's plan. And neither do they have a bucket list. Things that should be accomplished before kicking the bucket. Yeah, that's why it's called bucket list. In fact, no Hindu should have a bucket list because we say better luck next time. No problem. <laughs> Everything doesn't have to be accomplished now. What's the rush? What's the hurry? Relax. Yeah. Next time, new body, different body, same desires, okay, better luck. No problem at all. And so they don't have lists, they don't have agenda. This is what is Akamahataha. And there, you know, um, Adi Shankara will say, Shrotriya means the one who comes from a solid parampara. Parampara means lineage. Para, that which is above the teacher. Apara, student, that which is below, learning from the teacher, the, the para plus apara becomes parampara. So this, the, the lineage is important because this is not a knowledge that is made up. This is not a knowledge coming out of somebody's head. We are way, way ahead of that because we are not interested in anybody's personality giving this knowledge. This knowledge is about the Purusha, the person, and it comes from Sadashiva. That's why we pray. Sadashiva Samarambham, Shankaracharya Madhyamam, Asmadacharya Paryantam, Vande Guru Paramparam. I salute the entire lineage of Gurus, which started with Lord Shiva. And for us, for uh, and in, in which lineage Adi Shankara was a shining beacon, a comet that revolutionized how to look at things and, and is the link to Vyasa and all the others who came before him. I salute the lineage of Gurus because when we are relying on a lineage, there is no distortion. Oh, but what if there is one, you know, it's like we say, everybody in the lineage may not be very exalted. Maybe one person distorts the thing. It's just not possible. Even if one person, it's really not possible. But even if one person in the lineage is not very effective or not, you know, is not able to communicate properly, still the lineage is not tarnished because there are other carriers that is how it is because the knowledge transcends the person it is not dependent on the person if the teaching was dependent on the person then it will become what it will become a cult it is not a cult it is not dependent on the person at all. It is dependent upon, it is a lineage heavy teaching. And the lineage means it is safe. Whatever one receives here is safe. It is not coming out of the head of somebody or the other. It's not coming out of the head of the teachers. The teachers themselves received it from their teachers, who received it from their teachers, who received it from their teachers. This is why it is safe. And it is safe to be a Shrotriya. It is safe also to gain this knowledge from a Shrotriya, the one who has studied well, because then the knowledge is not distorted. It is just very, very important. Then, describing the word Akamahataha, Adi Shankara will say Brahmanishtaha. Brahmanishtha means Brahmani eva nishtha yasya saha. The one whose commit, nishtha means a committed life, commitment. The one whose commitment is only to Brahman and nothing else. This is not something easily discernible. How are you going to find out if the, you know, what is going on in the head of a person? Are you, th are you with Brahman or are you with uh, ice cream? You know, how are you going to find out? There is no way to discern that only one and there is no way to judge that 
only one brahmanishtha can tell another brahmanishtha who is another brahmanishtha to to see that to discern that one must first be a brahmanishtha and so therefore the, the, the these two are seen as the a person who enjoys the same degree of ananda as the aforementioned youth the one unit of human ananda and then the, the same person also enjoys that same uh, ananda multiplied a hundred times manushya gandharva ananda and then also the manushya gandharva ananda they also have a very interesting things they they don't feel hot or cold which is it is described here in the in the bhashya that means they don't need ac fan heater see already so much one is happier otherwise you know you just keep going ha ha too hot too hot too hot too cold too cold too cold okay what to do now there's no such problem dwandva it says away from the opposites and therefore they, they they don't have to worry about the mood these manushya gandharvas they don't have to worry about the mood they, they have they enjoy equanimity because the upadhi itself has equanimity and so therefore and who else is enjoying this the person sitting under the tree and then multiply this again another hundred times who else is enjoying that that particular person somewhere in the celestial realm heaven etc is enjoying who else is enjoying sitting right here under the tree in a finite limited and not very well functioning perhaps human uh, 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 upadhi human body one is still enjoying provided one is a shrotriya and provided one is not hijacked by desires so we will repeat this and then we will see this later on in the um, evening session saishanandasya me magum sa bhavati nandasya me magum sa bhavati yuvasya sadhu yuvadhyaya kah sadhu yuvadhyaya kah Ashishto dradishto balishtaha dradishto balishtaha tasye yam prithivi sarva tasye yam prithivi sarva vittasya purnasyat purnasyat saya eko manusha anandaha eko manusha anandaha te ye shatam manusha anandaha shatam manusha anandaha sa eko manushya gandharva namanandaha sa eko gandharva namanandaha shrotriyasya cha kamah tasya shrotriyasya cha kamah tasya te ye shatam manushya gandharva namanandha te ye shatam manushya gandharva namanandha sa eko deva gandharva namanandha sa eko deva gandharva namanandha shrotriyasya cha kamah tasya shrotriyasya cha kamah tasya te ye shatam deva gandharva namanandha te ye shatam deva gandharva namanandha sa ek pitrunam 
स एक पितृण चिरलोकलोकानंद चिरलोकलोकानंद श्रोत्रिय चाकाम तोत्रिय चाकाम तेयत पितृण ते शत पितृण चिरलोकलोकानंद चिरलोकलोकानंद स एक आजान अजान देवानंद श्रोत्रिय चाकाम तूं पूर्णमद पूर्णमद पूर्णा पूर्णमुद्य पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमी वशिष्य ओ शाति 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 हरि ओ श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओ थैंक यू